Anybody that's ever owned a small business or restaurant in this case has been told by somebody who lives and works near your restaurant, I didn't know you guys were there. I haven't been there forever. No, I've never been. Matt Plapp has driven by the Culver's in Florence for the last seven years, many times a day, and I've never stopped. Let's talk about grassroots and community marketing, and let's talk about the 90% of the people who just took this survey who had never been to one of our clients. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 179. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers because infrequent customers don't pay the bills, and there are a lot of people inside your restaurant that are infrequent, and there's a lot of people in your community that don't even know you exist. Let's discuss. So this past week, Sierra from my team was tasked with presenting in front of her BNI chapter a longer than normal presentation, seven minutes, I believe. It's usually 45 to 60 seconds. And by the way, we'll get to this later on, but if you're a restaurant owner and you are, or even a GM, catering manager, and you're not in a BNI chapter in your community, if you're not hosting a chapter at your restaurant, that's absolute lunacy in my opinion. Because this is equivalent to what Matt Plapp and our boat dealership did back in the day when we sponsored fishing tournaments. We started sponsoring fishing tournaments not because Matt Plapp was a fisherman, because I wasn't. We started sponsoring fishing tournaments because one day I was invited to one. I didn't know they existed. I went to Big Bone Landing down the Ohio River, right off of Big Bone Creek. And there was about 50 bass boats there, and each boat had two people. And I'm looking around, and there's no boat dealership, no fishing apparel company, no accessories, no nothing around. I'm like, let me get this right. I've got 100 people here at a fishing tournament with 50 boats, and a lot of the other people who weren't there with their boats, the partners in this case, you know, their fishing partner, had a boat too. So I could sell them boats. I could sell them parts, service, accessories, and fishing gear. Yeah, I think I'll sponsor these tournaments. So long story short, we sponsored every damn tournament we could. I think at one point we were giving out 35 to 40 grand in gift cards a year. Within, I don't know, three years, we became the number two, three fishing boat dealership in the United States, bass fishing. So I look at B&I chapters the same way for a restaurant because if I'm a restaurant owner, and the example I'm going to use here today is Buffalo Bob's off of Mount Zion Road in northern Kentucky, and Buffalo Bob's is a client of ours. And the stats you're going to hear about him, well, if I'm Bob, and I don't know, maybe Bob is, I don't know. If I'm Bob, I'm going to be in a B&I chapter. Why? Because every person in that chapter eats every day. They also have business meetings every week. Part of B&I is having one-to-one meetings with the people in your chapter. I've watched so many businesses build their company off of that. My company from 08 until 2015 was built strategically through high-level relationships built in BNI and started in BNI. And thank goodness my buddy, RIP, Brennan Scanlon, got me into BNI back in the day. I've also watched a shitload of restaurants come and go through BNI and be too busy to do it one day a week in a couple meetings. Blows me away. So this isn't about BNI, but this is about the stats that we learned from this BNI chapter, which could also support the reason somebody from a restaurant needs to be in a BNI chapter like this. So that's Grassroots 101. Shaking hands, kissing babies, building relationships. People that are in business organizations are more apt to eat out at lunch than the person that's a secretary or factory worker or somebody out in the field that's not. It's just a fact. 90% of my one-to-ones for 10 years while I was in BNI were out at restaurants, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so we're going to get into the stats of what I found out in this meeting because here's what happened. Sierra was tasked with 
presenting in front of the chapter. And I have a rule. She didn't listen to it the first time. I can't, can't wait till she hears this because I'm calling her out. First time, she got complicated. She wanted to play a video of me with Guy Fieri, which I get. It's a cool credibility builder. It was a cool conversation Guy and I had. If you haven't seen it, look it up on the YouTube, probably on the Gram, too, and Facebook and LinkedIn everywhere. Might even be on TikTok, Snapchat. Actually, we're not on Snapchat. Don't look there. So she wanted to use that video. And so she had this presentation prepared. And I said, Sierra, do not ever use technology in any presentation under 30 minutes especially anything 10 to 15, because guess what? It'll always go wrong. And sure enough, her presentation, the computer, it was, it was at our headquarters here, and the, the HDMI cable wouldn't work to the TV. It worked the day before. It wouldn't work that day. Everything went wrong. Screwed the whole presentation up. And afterwards, she's like, I know, I know. You told me not to use technology. You told me I should be something basic. I'm sorry. I'll do it next time. Well, her next time was this past week, and she came to me and said, okay, I'm going to take your advice. What do you want me to do? What do you think I should do? I said, if I was you, I would literally have a QR code, giant QR code on a piece of paper, or maybe hand a flyer out to every person and have that QR code go to the VIP program of one of our local restaurants that could benefit from that presentation. And in this case, I said Buffalo Bob's. It's right down the street. It's literally probably, I imagine if I got on the expressway, it's probably two or three miles from here, maybe even down 42, not too long, go down 42, turn on Mount Zion. It's not too far away. Actually, I think you'd turn on... Yeah, Mount Zion or Weaver, there's two ways to get there. So I'm like, let's use that. And I want you just to basically say, hey, tell me who you are and talk about what we stand for, ABR, attract, build, retain. And I'm going to show you a tactic of how we can use attention marketing, like the attention I'm going to get from each of you in this BNI chapter, to build a database. And I'm going to show you the depth of the database. We interrupt your program for a brief announcement from our sponsor. Hey, it's Matt, and yeah, that was me. But guess what? We don't have any sponsors. It's just us, America's Best Restaurants. We don't take money for our podcast. We don't sell sponsorships. We don't have product placements. It's just me giving you advice that can help your restaurant get to the next level. But what I would love for you to do is check out what America's Best Restaurants is doing at americasbestrestaurants.com. Check out our ABR Roadshow on the Get Featured tab, or check out what we're doing under Restaurant Marketing and Help that can help you, independent restaurants, take the next step in your marketing now back to the podcast. And the depth of that database comes from the information gathered. So this QR code, as people scanned it, and I'm going to go to my other screen here and look at this, it has the opt-in source. So from 8.50 a.m. is what it shows on here to 8.53 a.m., 21 of the 40 or so people that were in that meeting scanned this code and joined. And this is what's pretty interesting about it because also she's able to hold her BNI counterparts to the carpet here because after the meeting, she came back. We pulled up the client's back end data and I said, Hey, I want you now to send an email because she walked through what the program did. And I'll give you that info in here a second. But she, I said, I want you now to send an email. No, it wasn't an email, it was a Facebook post because they have a private Facebook group for their BNI chapter. I want you to post this screenshot showing the 21 people who opted in because my one of my ulterior motives because obviously I want her to get referrals from people in the chapter who are friends with independent business and independent restaurant owners that we can help dominate but I also want to get Buffalo Bob's more business and I said I want you to post this screenshot inside of the Facebook group because it's going to inadvertently call out the 20 or so people who didn't opt in and I want to go while I'm talking about this to that sheet and see how many opted in after she did that because I can look and see, which I think would be pretty funny. Buffalo Bob's, I'm going to pull up. This is a Google sheet that we have. And they've been a client in this program for a while now. So let's go back. Got to scroll, scroll, scroll. He's got thousands of people in this program. But so I had her post that in that Facebook group. And I want to see. So she did. I'm looking at my lines here on this sheet. It was line. First one was Stephanie Hickey. There's Stephanie Hickey. Okay. And then the last one was Zach, Zachary Cameron. So Zachary Cameron. So after she did that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten people scanned it afterwards. So it could have been, you know, they took the flyer home with them and did it. It could have been when they were pushed by that. So we got 
10 more people to join it, but I'm going to go over the data on this because this is where it's gold. So what happens is when people scan this QR code, and the concept of these QR codes are great for when you're out doing community marketing. You're at a high school football game. You're sponsoring it. Don't be like, hey, come to our restaurant. Say, hey, scan this, co- this code and get something badass. In this case, I think it's a buy one, get one free burger. It's like five free boneless wings. It's a free dessert. It's a free you know, buy one, get one free something else. The bribe is to get their data. And so Sierra went through that. And the first question it asks them is a question that gets them to say if they're a new frequent or lost customer. Hey, based on, please answer the question below to let us know how often you come to the restaurant. I've never been before. I'm brand new. I come all the time. I'm frequent. I haven't been in a long time. I'm lost. Then it gets their phone, their email, their phone number, their birthday. And we also get their gender when they log in through that. And we get their Facebook ID and we can now retarget them through Facebook, Instagram, as well as Facebook Messenger. So we got a lot of information. But here's the reason I want to tell you all this. Not because I wanted to hammer home the importance of BNI and local community marketing. Not because I wanted to leverage using QR codes to gain customer data. But the topic of this, this podcast today is about people not knowing you. And I'll never forget when we had that boat dealership I talked about. The number of people, we were spending 300 Gs a year. We had a seven-acre store, which now is occupied by Kona Ice's corporate office. And you had to drive by. Our, you could not see our store on 18 in Florence, Kentucky. But every day for year after year, people came in. So I didn't know what you guys did here. I didn't know you sold boats. I just bought a boat. And I'm like, damn it. We, just, we could have sold you a boat. So here's Buffalo Bob's stats on the first 21 people that joined because I did this. I didn't pull up this sheet with the new people until after I got the idea on this podcast. 12 of them said they had never been. Seven said they had not been in a long time. And two said they were frequent customers. So here's a BNI chapter that meets in Boone County. Buffalo Bob's is in Boone County. Now, granted, he's off the Mount Zion exit and you got three or four exits that hit Boone County. But It's not hard to get to. It's easy to get to. He's been in the business. I actually met Bob as a client of mine in radio back in like 1999. He had a location on Mall Road, and he was a Buffalo Wings and Rings Rings franchise back then. And eventually had a second store and then eventually consolidated on this and went to Buffalo Bob's when the Wings and Rings brand went through some name changes. And I guess I think I actually closed up back in the day. But he's been around for a while. He's got awesome food. He's an amazing operator. The restaurant is, is, is great. Great atmosphere. It's homey. The food's always phenomenal. We just had their wings here at the office the other day. We had 150 wings in here Wednesday because we were testing some sauces that a friend of mine sent me from a restaurant in California. But think about that. Of these 21 business professionals in this meeting who are spending their time and money to be in a meeting, who are out in the community more often than normal people, 21 people, 19 of them, either had never been or haven't been in a long time. 57% said they have never been. 33% said they hadn't been in a long time. 90%. These streets are lined with gold, my friends, meaning there are a shitload of people out in your community that do not eat at your restaurant, that do not refer people to your restaurant, that do not buy catering from your restaurant that do not bring friends to your restaurant, that do not buy gift cards from your restaurant. Why? Because they aren't your customers. This is a small sample size. I'll give you that. But these are active people in the business community who are meeting on a weekly basis miles from a restaurant they should be eating at on the frequent because Buffalo Bob's is awesome. So we did our part to help infiltrate that chapter with Sierra's presentation to also show that chapter the power of what data we gained. Because this is the value. So many restaurants out there are making Facebook posts, sending out emails, sponsoring football teams, running radio. They're doing nothing to gather data that they can use over and over. And they're also, when they are doing something to gather data, they're not gathering enough. They're getting just an email. They're not getting a name. They're not getting a phone number. They're not getting visit frequency. They're not getting birthday. We can target these people so many different ways and build a relationship. But I want you really to take home the fact that 90% of these people are not eating at Buffalo Bob's and he's a 20-year-plus restaurant. 
I, I think at least probably 1999, because that's how long I've known the restaurant, around 99, 2000. So 23 to 24 years. He's an awesome operator. He's independent. He's got amazing food service. The atmosphere is great. He's got plenty of seating. He's got dining. He's got to go. He's got, I'm sure he does third party. He's got pickup, all that stuff. He's got catering. We catered wings here. The reason Matt Platt catered Buffalo Bob's here isn't necessarily because they're a client. That is one big reason. But it's also because I'm a customer. Not as often as I should because it's not as close to my house because where it's located. But my dad's there all the time. Go there at least once or twice a month. We've had a couple company functions there. But 90% of these people, and I can promise you, you'd be blown away how many people drive by your restaurant or out active in your community every day and aren't eating at your restaurant because you've not done what it takes to gather them. So A, get out in your community, get involved in BNI chapters, host BNI chapters at your restaurant, be that person that is active in your community on a daily basis. And the second part of that, I think I said A there, maybe B, get with a software, with a tool. I mean, if it's us, great. If it's not us, somebody else. But get something that lets you get deeper data on your customers because if you don't get deeper data, you cannot build loyalty. Our acronym is ABR, Attract, Build, Retain. Attract the attention of customers that should know you. Build loyalty by gathering their data and knowing them deeper and then retain them by using that data to build that loyalty. That's all I got. I'll see you next episode. So as you know, I don't charge my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.